today's video we're going to be taking a look at an all new product and this product is from a new company called z's now they're claiming that everything is designed in italy except the esc obviously here which we're going to get into in a little bit here so this video is going to be quite long so the table of contents will be down below and you can also skip to whatever part you want in the video progress bar so some of the things we're going to be covering is the advanced breakdown for the advanced users and also the basic connection setup guide and also my thoughts and opinions as i go along here pcbway is one of the leading pcb manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer i use for my products now if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product pcb way is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services so go ahead and check the links down below So first of all, let's start off with the accessories here. Obviously you get the ESC here, which is 6S capable, and you get the F7 flight controller. So they do give you an XT60, which is 12 gauge. That's really great to see here. And they also give you these LED boards for each arm. Since this thing has uh, the connectors ready for these LED boards, and these are RGB LEDs. So that's really nice to give you four of these. They also do provide you with the cable needed to route your ESC to your flight controller. They also give you another one which you could pre route to whatever orientation you want. They give you two different type of connectors that might go into any other ESC or flight control depending on what you're going to be connecting with what. So that's really nice to see here. It's a nice little touch. First company to do that was Maytech. They give you two extra rubber grommets. And they give you some hardware, which are metal and also some pin headers, which you'll see what you might need these for in a bit here. Now, in the second goodie bag here, they also do provide us with two 35 volt Rubicon low ESR capacitors that are rated for 470 microfarads. So these are 35 volt, both of them. And they also do provide you here with a bit more uh, rubber grommets and a bit more of these standoffs, these metal standoffs, actually pretty nice. Now, what we're going to cover in this part is just a quick overview of some of the specs before diving in deeper. Now, and again, we have this 4-in-1 ESC, which looks to be designed by either Spedex or Racer Star, to be honest. These look exactly of the same design aspect. And what's really nice with this ESC here is you can either use a connector and also use the soldering pads here to uh, connect it to any other flight controller if you needed to, or if you don't like connectors, you can do that as well. This is a BL Heli 32, again, and rated up to 6s 60 amps now for filtration it seems to be somewhat decent i still highly recommend you add that low esr capacitor as you can tell we do have two holes for that these are pretty big capacitors but i think it would need a lot more especially if you're running this on a 6s as we can see we also do have edge plating which is really nice that means it'll allow more current to pass through that's always something you want to look for here big fets as well and if we look at the flight controller this is where I would have done things slightly differently, but everyone has their own opinion. Now, for example, the way that they've designed it, they're trying to make it as small as possible to fit most frames and to do this kind of design here. And at the same time, what they're trying to do here is the, the TBS uh, Crossfire Nano Receiver would be installed here and you have your TBS Uni5 video transmitter could just be popped in right there and you'll be good to go to keep it pretty compact. But I see a really bad design choice in my opinion. Well, I don't know if it's a des bad design choice, but you can see that's already breaking the PCB here. So when they're trying to pop, when they pop these off, we can see that some of these probably even broken. They couldn't even ship to customers because of this issue here. And I do see this as a weak point in this flight controller. If this were to break, it's going to be pretty bad actually I, I don't think how i don't i can't think of any other way that you could actually fix this um unless you probably sandwich it between something so this is something that i could expect in a pretty hard crash to crack the pcb right here and it could rip out some traces so that's one design feature that i wouldn't have uh, liked to see slightly different but i guess they're trying to make it compact in a way here now another thing that i really don't like seeing is they did not utilize all of this empty space for at least an 8 volt regulator or a 9 volt regulator because this will give it much more flexibility to be installed in a dji setup or just give you a very good clean video feed in case your ESC is pretty bad so that's something i would have done also slightly differently here but saying that it does pack a lot of features and a lot of flexibility in a way so for example here we have the v vtx which is the voltage for the vtx which can be selected right here again we're going to cover more in detail later on in this video you could choose vbat which is battery voltage and or a 5 volt same thing goes for the receiver you could choose whether it's a 3.3 or a 5 volt even for the camera control, you could use cam control or a UART because some cameras take UART to control. Some cameras take the uh, OSD remote and that would be the cam control selection. Again, we'll cover that more in this video. And as we can tell, we do have a USB-C type connection and 128 megabytes of flash memory. Now, I'm really hoping this is 
somehow faster than the usual flash memory we have because that would give it a huge benefit. But if it's just a basic 128 megabytes of flash memory, I don't think many people would use this, but it can be used in some specific applications. You might know better if you needed that or not. So let's go ahead and jump into the next part now. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be doing the advanced breakdown of this Z stack here. Now, the flight controller is pretty interesting, but there's a lot of empty space that I wish I, I, I would have, I personally would have utilized in a better way. But I guess they're trying to go for that compact uh, fitment. And we're going to explain what that means in a bit here. So let's go over some of the brief specs real quick. However, uh, for example, here we have memory, but this time we don't have 8 megabytes, 32, 16. We actually have 120 eight megabytes of flash memory and that's a good thing but at the same time i would personally prefer for example a 16 megabyte memory that's much faster than these current ones you know to transfer out those uh, black box logs because they do take quite a long time to do that but saying that i think this is one of the first uh, flight controllers to incorporate 128 megabytes of flash memory so that's pretty interesting i guess i never really used that much anyways but it's nice to know that you have that if you needed it for some kind of a specific scenario now for the fc they're using an f722 which is really great this is the latest and greatest gyro we're using in a mpu 6000 gyro here and now for the connection setup they try to give as much possible in it as they can uh, you know the only thing that i, I personally think is missing is a is a nine volt regulator or an eight volt regulator i think that would have been just absolutely superb but here you can choose between five volt for your video transmitter and also vbat which is battery voltage here you would put a tbs unify uh, video transmitter you could actually solder it directly here and it'll be right on the board and right here, this is meant to be used with the TBS Crossfire Nano receivers. You can just solder them right on the board and you should be good to go. But I think most people won't do that. And uh, we're going to cover that also later on in this video here. But what I want to show you is we have a lot of options to choose from. And what do I mean by that? Well, for example, right here, VVTX, which means the voltage of the VTX here. So this is the voltage of the VTX. And you decide that in this area right here. So if you bridge the middle one with this one, it'll give you battery voltage. And if you bridge the middle one with the left one here, it'll give you five volts. So you could decide what you want here. Here we have a UART3 for the uh, Smart Audio IRC Tramp Protocol. The video output, this would be the yellow line. Again, we're gonna cover that more in the detail once we get into that topic here. This is just more of an advanced breakdown here. We do see we have our OSD right here, which is really great. This is actually a USB-C type input, which is, uh, and it's, it's not that new, but it's good to see that things are going in that direction. So now if we take a look up here, we see we have Cam C and U6TX, which means UR6. So if you bridge these two, you get UR6. If you bridge the middle one with this one, then you get Cam Control. Cam Control basically simulates the OSD remote of your camera, your FPV camera. And you could either choose by serial because some cameras take serial to control the on-screen display of the camera. And some just use the remote. And if yours used a remote, then you'd want to bridge the Cam C, the middle one with the Cam C. And again, if you use the serial for your camera, you would probably know that if, if, if you're watching this, then you would want to bridge those two on the right here. Now also for the VRX right here, this is the video, I'm sorry, not the video. Now also again, if we take a closer look here, the VRX means the voltage for your receiver. And again, it's, it's not that self-explanatory, but it, it is kind of. And if you connect it here, your receiver won't boot up until you choose whether it's a 5 volt or a 3.3 volt. And the way you choose that is with these two right here. If you bridge the middle one with the bottom one right there, then that'll give you 5 volts. And if you bridge the middle one with the top one, that'll give you 3.3 volts for your video uh, for your receiver here. And then obviously you have your TX and RX. TX, if you're running F port, you would set that up there. S bus, you'd set up on RX right here. And um, yeah, that's, that's currently it here. It does have a lot of other options. We do see we have buzzer down here. And um, let's see what else do we have. We have a five volt regulator. And again, I really wish they would have added some sort of a nine volt regulator. That would have been much, much better in my opinion. And what's really cool about this is it takes, I think uh, they said three to eight S voltage, the, the flight controller, not the ESC, the flight controller here. So you can do that as well. And I guess that's it for the advanced breakdown. Let's go ahead and jump into the connection setup guide here. So in this part of the video, we're going to be covering the camera setup guide. So let's go ahead and get started here. So for every camera, there's three main wires you need to connect, which is the power, which would be five volt, ground and video. Those are the main wires. And here we're, we're actually going to utilize this OSD and I'll explain how we can do that with this flight controller here. 
So the place where you want to connect this into your flight control, obviously, first of all, you need to make sure where your arrow is pointing. This should be pointing to the front of the quadcopter and should be facing up in the quadcopter. So you should be able to look down and see the side of the board like this. Now, let's go ahead and start with the five volts. Now, and again, uh, this camera, most cameras now take more than five volts, but I always recommend you add five volts because uh, they just don't have good filtration on board. And sometimes that could just make an absolute nightmare of lines. Uh, in your video feed and it could just ruin your whole flying uh, experience. So always make sure you connect your camera on 5 volts. So here we have our 5 volt pad on this flight controller right here. And it's going to be very simple because everything is in the same uh, place, which is going to make the overall connection just so much easier for us here. So now the next wire over is going to be ground. And if you don't know where I'm getting this from, you could see the layout right here. 5 volt ground, cam in, VBAT, and the U6RX, which I'll explain in a bit here. So right now, the next one down is going to be ground. So let's just go ahead and set that up as well. We're just going to put that there and we're going to put that right there. The next thing we need is the video line. And the reason why we put the video line into the flight controller is so that it could pass through the on-screen display, which is this thing right here, which overlays information on your video feed when it goes down to your goggles, such as battery voltage, GPS location, anything that you might have set up. So that would go right here. That's where your video line is going to want to go. So we're just going to go ahead and set that up just like that and just like that. So like that, we have our camera completely set up. We don't need to install this vSense or OSD if you do have those. But if you wanted to, you can. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky if you're new. So this one says OSD. So the OSD, usually these cameras come with a remote that you can control. And um, this flight controller takes that into consideration. There's also cameras that would say uh, RX or T. Yeah, it would say RX. And if it says RX, then you'd want to do something slightly different. And again, we'll cover that right here right now. So you might think it's the next one over, but we actually want to skip one over because this is battery voltage right here. And again, I never recommend you give battery voltage. So we're going to have to go to this one right here. And we're just going to go ahead and just connect it real quick. However, when you connect it just like that, it's still not going to work because we need to do one more thing in this area right here. Now, if yours says OSD, then you're going to want to bridge the middle one with this one right here. And that will allow you to control it. Uh, it it'll allow the flight control to mimic the OSD remote for your camera. Now, if you had an RX here on this, so it would say RX, then you want to bridge the middle one with this one right here. And then you'd have UART 6 controlling this so keep that in mind you'd have to set that up in the beta flights ports tab section under uart 6 peripherals that's where you'd set that up if you're using uh, a uart but cam control it'll be uh, i think it should be just good just the way it is and that's going to include it for the camera let's go ahead and move on to the next part all right so in this part of the video we are going to be covering the video transmitter part now before connecting your video transmitter you need to make sure what is the input voltage on your video transmitter there's basically two in the market there's ones that take battery voltage, which would say 7 to 26 or even more volts. So that would be considered battery voltage uh, VTX. And we also have the other one in the market, which only takes 5 volts. So you need to make sure you figure that out before you start connecting this. And we are going to be covering both. First of all, we'll start with the battery voltage video transmitter. Now, most video transmitters nowadays will come with an extra 5 volt in ground. And those are outputs. Make sure you don't connect anything to those you always want to look for the input or if you or if it says seven to something volts that's the input so in our case it's going to be this red wire right here now this is going to go to the vvtx right there boom just like that and now we have our voltage connected now next down the line we are going to grab our ground wire which is going to be the next one over here and it's just going to go right next to it just right there then we have our video line, which is something you need because that's what's going to uh, give you your video feed down to your goggles. And there it goes. It goes to video out. And if you have smart audio or IRC tramp protocol, it's also in the same location. So we're going to just set that up right there. And that's going to be UART3. So UART3 uh, is going to be in charge of your uh, smart audio or IRC tramp protocol. So in the beta flights ports tab, that's where you want to go and enable uh, smart audio in the peripherals and or IRC tramp protocol under UART3. Now, remember, we said we're going to show both the battery voltage VTX and also the 5 volt VTX. Well, actually, they both connect in the same place on this flight controller. However, what you have to do is then choose what kind of VTX you have in this area right here. So we see we have three squares next to each other here. Now, if we bridge the middle one with this one, then it will output battery voltage. So it'll output battery voltage. And if we bridge the middle one with the left one down, then it'll give us five volts. So if you had a five volt video transmitter, 
then you would put solder between those two. And if you had the VBAT or the battery voltage video transmitter, then you're going to want to bridge those two together. And it's this area that we're looking at right here. And it's very, very simple. It says 5 volt and VBAT. VBAT is battery voltage here. And that's really it for connecting any video transmitter other than a TBS Unify on this. So let's go ahead and jump into the next part. All right, so in this part of the video, we're going to be covering SBUS, IBUS, and also the TBS Crossfire. And it's going to be very simple here because this is an F7, so you, your SBUS could be connected anywhere and IBUS could also be connected anywhere. So let's go ahead and start off with the power. First of all, let's go ahead and connect our ground. So our ground wire is going to be here, and we're just going to go ahead and just set that up just right there, there we go. You could put it on either one of these two right here. So we could, you know, you could put it on both or just on either one. You'll be fine. Next, let's go ahead and cover the power. The power is going to be slightly different because if you just connect it the way you connect it, like just default, it's not going to work because you still need to choose one more option here. So it goes the same thing. You connect it on both of these. So here you could actually choose whether it's a five volt or a 3.3 volt. Now this does matter if you have spectrum. I think spectrum is what uses 3.3 volts. And usually everything else uses five volts like S bus or I mean FR sky fly sky and the TBS stuff. So the thing you want to do is you want to take a look at this area right here. And you're going to want to bridge the middle one with the bottom one. Just make sure these two are bridged together. You put a little solder on there and bridge these two together. And what that allow you to do <clears throat> and what that does is it gives five volts to this rail so we can power on our receiver here. And like just like that, we're good. But just make sure you don't bridge all three together. Just the middle one with the bottom one, that's five volts. If you bridge the middle one with the top one, that's 3.3 volts if you're using spectrum here. Now let's go ahead and cover SBUS since it's right in front of us. So SBUS is going to go into the R pad right over here. And we're just going to just do that like that just real quick. So just like that, SBUS is covered. However, if you had IBUS, you do exactly the same thing right here. You connect it into the same exact place. Now, if you're using F port on FR Sky, then F port is going to want to go on the TX right here. So you would say F port would go right there. And if you were connecting the uh, the TBS uh, crossfire, then you know, you have your RX and TX. Just mix them, and you're going to be good to go under that perspective. And that basically just covers the receiver. It's really that simple. And um, yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and jump to the next step of the video. All right, so right now we're going to go ahead and cover the ESC part. Now, because the documentation doesn't really state the orientation or the way it's supposed to be placed in your quadcopter, and it's very, very important here. So the way this is supposed to be placed in your quadcopter is the battery leads should be in the back side of your quadcopter. This should be up top and right here should be your camera somewhere up in the front in this area right here. Now a couple things that I really like about this flight control is to keep in mind to keep the holes for the low ESR capacitor right here. So it'll make your life really easy to set up. And also you don't have to use the connector. You can also solder to these points right here, which would be really great. So you have their battery voltage, you have your ground, then you have motor one, two, three, four, and then you have your current, and then you have your telemetry if you're going to be using that. Now the design feature and the design layout here looks very similar to two brands, which are Spedix and Racer Star. Uh, they do, these do have the edge plating, but so do those, but, um, it really reminds me of kind of that new racer star that's just been released here. And I can tell that this is not their design. This is some OEM branded. The flight controller seems to be something they've designed, but the ESC here was probably taken from some other company here. Either Racer Star or Spedex have done this for them. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, also the FET size looks pretty good. It's using obviously STM32 Cortex, I think M0s here for the uh, microcontroller units for the ESC, which is BL Heli 32 here. And it is 6S capable. And the pads are really great, etch plating. And we could even see these closed vias in there, which will allow more current to pass through. And again, that's really nice to see here. And um, the heatsink again is just on half of the other FETs. It's not covering all the FETs, but the heat dissipation should still be pretty good as well. And well, that's really it for this, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everything is linked down below. Uh, go ahead and check those out. Those greatly really support the channel. And again, Come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways, especially for new Patreons of the month. They get their own special dedicated giveaway. No shitty battery straps or stickers. You actually get proper components like this. Video transmitters, cameras, quadcopters, whatever. So yeah, go ahead and check it out if you like it. Then join. You can support the channel. You get a bunch of things in return. And well, that's it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.